we're just finishing up a book called It Will Never Happen to Me, Claudia Black, PhD, Growing Up with Addiction as Youngsters, Adolescents, and Adults. It's about kids that grew up in an addictive family, and because of that, they develop a survival-type personality to get through life when a parent is just not there for them mentally, maybe not there physically, they're causing trauma in the house, they're scared, and usually these four types of personalities emerge. And the one that gets the most credit all the time is the kid that acts out. I was the acting out kid, right? It's the kid that's always going to the principal's office or it's the kid that ends up in juvie or, you know, gets arrested and doing things like that in the counselor's office. Obviously that kid acts out. That's the kid that gets the most attention because he's drawing the most attention to himself. But there's a few other personalities that kids develop that are harmful to their social relationships later in life when they become adults. They get looked over because on the outside they look good, but on the inside they're not so good. One of them is the responsible child and a quote from this type of personality says, everything must be in order in my house or it brings great anxiety to me. The orderliness probably stems from the chaos I felt in an adolescent years. My parents' house was always physically orderly, but human relationships was chaos. You look at this child and you're like, man, that kid's 12 years old and he's raising his brothers. That's a good kid. This kid's only 10 and he just handles his homework and does his chores and just cleans up. This kid is the responsible child, which is a survival technique because they're coping with the parent or both parents that are drug addicts, right? And this becomes a problem later in life because of the lack of learning coping skills, the lack of the parents' consistent parenting and love relationships inside the family. The second one we learned was the adjuster. Put me in any situation now and I can adjust, but please don't ask me to be responsible for it or change it. The kid just goes with the flow. Usually the older parents, the responsible one helping raise this one, the kid's just like, okay, I guess we're moving to grandma's house, staying here for two nights because they just had a fight. Oh, nope, we're back in the car. We're going home. Everything's good again. And they just kind of adjust to everything in life. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that we learned about this family. The behavior is less painful for these children and it makes life easier for the rest of the family as well. Oh, little Timmy gives us no problem. He just adjusts to every situation that's going on. It's almost like he's not even there. And now the placator. The placator quote says, whenever a family problem comes up, both sides will call me to settle disputes. I am called on to make many decisions and I do them all alone. Growing up, my friends used to ask me for advice as they felt that I knew a lot and rarely had problems of my own. So they just swallow their own problems and anytime like they see mom or dad hurting, they want to fix their emotions. Let me fix everything and they neglect themselves. And then you got the acting out child, which we talked about, which gets most of the attention. Reshaping roles. So as described in chapter four, progression of the roles, those four roles we were talking about, the responsible placator, adjuster, and acting out. The roles the children adopt lead them to have gaps. Gaps are psychological voids that result from inconsistent parenting and lack of appropriate boundaries and emotional support. The gaps we're talking about in these children that look good on the outside, but the gaps are on the inside that we don't see. The gaps include not learning to relax, not knowing how to rely on others, not knowing how to follow, not knowing how to lead, never allowing one's own needs to be met, and many other undeveloped coping mechanisms. Now that I read that, I feel like that was me. I never learned how to be led and I never allowed anyone to meet my needs. Not only will these gaps create life skill problems, but they may also predispose the children to marry addicts or engage in addictive disorders. The lack of healthy coping mechanisms most often predispose children to experience emotional problems. When giving children an understanding of addiction through talking about the real issues and teaching them to identify and express feelings while establishing healthy support networks, there is also a specific specific need to focus on reshaping roles. These are obvious benefits in learning how to be responsible, adjust, and placate. Yet in the process, gaps are created because children have not acquired a sense of emotional balance, did not learn the balance. They adopt the roles out of severe need, a sense of survival. So they may bring consistency to an extremely chaotic and unpredictable family system. It gives them something to cling on to, something to feel safe in. While we should not seek to take away the positive aspects of the role, a responsible child's a good thing. We shouldn't seek to remove that. We do need to help the children achieve a better sense of balance in certain areas. In essence, we need to fill the gaps. Children need an environment in which they can learn social skills. Their natural survival techniques are not allowing them to learn. The reshaping of roles generally means changing our expectations of children's behaviors and also changing our behavior towards them. Here's the thing you can do. Instead of immediately becoming frustrated when the eight-year-old acts 
eight years of age and insisting she acts like a little adult, allow her to display some of that normal eight-year-old behavior. This will require patience. When the placating child reaches out to placate one more time, rather than applaud him, let him know you appreciate his thoughtfulness, but you want to be alone and you're going to call a friend to talk to. Can I phone a friend? You can't phone a friend. Because the placator wants to fix you emotionally. And instead of giving in to that, you say, no, I'm good, but thank you, though. I appreciate that. I'm going to call a friend and talk to them. Then they have to deal with that situation. Remember, change in any system, even when that change is positive, is often met with resistance. As you assist in reshaping roles, children may exhibit confusion, depression, withdrawal, or anger. Children will feel awkward about making changes, but these feelings are natural and are to be expected. God, grant, grant me the serenity, serenity to accept, accept the things, things I cannot, cannot change, the courage. The courage to, to change, change the things, things I can, can and, and the, the wisdom, wisdom to know, know the, the difference. difference. Amen, Amen y'all. Amen. Until next time, do not put yourself in a high risk situation. Stay strong, work your program, and remember that we, we recover, recover better, better together. together.